let's quickly do this beam as well which we have fixed support and we have a free end this was what we were calling a balcony or a cantilever yeah mm -hmm. so let's draw the axis this is just for our guide so this is the beam lens and this is the deflection mm -hmm. can you guess how is the deformed shape for sure you can if not let's bring this back so fix end free end the deflection goes up and down if I apply a load downward for sure it will be something like this so let's draw it so the deformed shape that I guess this will have it will be something like this deformed shape let's remember that theta is this and let's write the boundary conditions at the free end there will be deflection there will be slope as well at the fixed end if you remember there won't be any slope there won't be any deflection yeah to just not get confused deflection and this are just the symbols that we use sometimes I use like this sometimes I use like this doesn't matter we can use Delta forever so this is the boundary conditions of this case and we know that the boundary conditions comes to our help finding those constants a and B now the next step was to figure out the moment function can we figure out the moment function of this yes very simple let's draw the free body diagram of this so it's something similar to this there is P over there this is the free body diagram I have the reactions each of them will have a value probably this is zero probably this is P and probably this is like P times L probably if you don't know how to calculate it like that the summation of all forces in X and Y as well as the moment will give you that yeah but do we really need these values now no because we said we start from the left side we carry on until something distracts us so if I start from this left side and I carry on this is the distraction so my cut section will be here and I don't care about these now if I bring this section out it will be something similar to this I have the P I have a point here we set the standard for moment is like this moments moments shear shear because I'm cutting it here so I will have the same side so there will be V of X as well as a moment function M of X I cut it a tiny bit before the full length L so this length is now X anything else no and I just want the moment function so I say summation of all moments along point O let's call this point O goes to zero with this direction as positive this moment going along point O yes if you remember the moment so I'm applying force there's a pin here this force along this there is a distance here this will cause a moment like this yeah and we said moment is force times that perpendicular distance let's look at here moments along point O P going around O is clockwise so it's positive P times this perpendicular distance is X so P times X there is nothing else 
there is one negative mx. You see, this is my positive direction, that is mx. I'll bring it to the other side. So the function will be this. This is the moment function of this cantilever beam with one concentrated point at its free end. This is the moment function. What was the formulation of deflection? Negative integration integration m over ei d of x d of x and you're supposed to memorize this so let's zoom out and let's do the calculation so i just replaced this m with this moment function so it will be negative integration integration px I think I did a mistake, sorry. This going around this is against this direction. So this is negative PX. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. This goes around it. So it's anti-clockwise while my positivity was clockwise. So let's say negative PX EI DX DX. Let's multiply that's negative in it and let's replace all of this integration with this if i multiply it, it will be px ei yeah i'm sure you all know that this form of presenting this integration is true can i solve it let's do the first integration is p x to the power of 2 divided by 2 plus a constant all of this times 1 over ei this time instead of putting ei this side i'll put it the other side let's do another one as well another integration now p x to the power of 3 3 times 2 6 plus the constant will get an x plus a new constant times 1 over ei we said this is the slope and this is the deflection. So the first integration gave me the slope. The second integration is giving me the deflection. We have a problem here, A as well as B. The problem can be solved with the boundary conditions. So I say at x equal to, let's say, L the slope should be zero as well as the deflection should be zero. So at x equals to L deflection should be zero. We all accept that. At x equal to L the slope or d of v over d of x should be zero as well let's find what is the maximum slope yes let, let's figure out what is the slope of this point or let's call the slope rotation it's the same thing so if this is the slope or rotation let's see how much it is at x equal to zero so maximum rotation at x equal to zero yeah i'm now dealing with this formula the rotation formula or the slope formula if i put x equal to zero this will be generally zero i'll end up with just a and a i have already calculated this much so my theta which is the same as this will be negative p l to the power of 2 divided by 2 e i so this was deflection this was slope or rotation now p 
pay attention to the deflection. What is the relationship of deflection and E and I? When the material is strong, the E is bigger. Or when the material has a very strong cross section, I is bigger. If any of these guys get bigger, what happens to deflection? Deflection gets smaller. And makes sense. If you put pillow in it, the E will be very small, so the deflection will be very big. If you put aluminium or steel in it, E will be very big, so deflection will be very small. The same th happens with the cross section as well. If you put a small cross section, a cross section which the I of it will be small, the deflection will be automatically bigger. If you increase the I, the deflection will be decreased. So E representing the material and I representing the form of the cross section play an important role in how the deflection is, as well as the length of the beam, as well as the force is applied. If the force applied is big, definitely the deflection will be bigger as well. If the length is big, definitely the deflection will be big as well. Let's look at the previous example that we had. So this was for a simply supported beam. Yes. With a distributed load on it. I'm sure by now you can guess that really doesn't matter whether the, there is a roller here and a pin or here or the opposite of this, a roller here and a pin over there. It's the same thing. Anyhow, the deflection of this guy over the length of L is given by this formulation. We just solved it. Now, again, if the material is stronger, the deflection will be smaller. If the cross-sectional area is stronger, the deflection will be smaller. The same thing is the other way around. If the load on top of it, meaning W, is bigger, for sure I'll have more deflection. If the length is longer as well, for sure I will have bigger deflection. Let's look at it. Let's bring this guy compared to this guy. The same force I apply, this will go like this. The same force I apply, this will go like this. Trust me, I'm controlling my hands to apply the same force. This goes a little bit, while the same force, this goes a lot. So L, and you can see suddenly it goes to the power of 4, has a very direct relationship with deflection. So always remember, the force applied, whether it's a distributed load or a concentrated load, the length, these two have direct in, um, effect on the deflection. If they are bigger, the deflection will be bigger. But the material and the cross-section have indirect effect. If they are bigger, the deflection will be smaller. A stronger material, a better cross-section will result in a lower deflection. Generally, in designing buildings, we want deflection to be minimum. Yeah, we don't want our beams to be bending. So we use material which have very good eye, like reinforced concrete or steel or aluminium or in some cases timber, or we use cross sections which are very efficient. For example, the eye section, which is more efficient than a hollow rectangle or a circular section or a hollow circle. That's why I was invented. So that is it all for lecture seven, which we mainly discussed about the deflection of the beam and how we calculate it through that double integration. Also, we discussed the elastic beam theory as well, which all of these formulations, as well as the um, elastic section modulus are coming out of it. So pay attention to these, go through them, uh, practice, practice the worksheet problem number five as well, which has lots of these uh, problems related to deflection as well as the boundary conditions. And keep safe. Good luck. See you later.